All right, I don't know about you, but when I read the Old Testament, it seems to me like there are two gods speaking. I don't think a stable, balanced god would come off as bipolar unless he's wielding both light and darkness. I don't think the prime creator is light and darkness. I think he might seem dark when he has to execute righteous judgment on those that have corrupted themselves or are misbehaving. Sure, righteous judgment, meaning the right type of judgment, can seem dark, but it's not. It is just judgment. But I do believe that uh, the cosmogrator, whatever they call him, Samuel, Yaudaba, Saklas, fool, and other idiots like himself, some would say even Zeus, the idiot from the fifth uh, realm. Anyways, let me not talk so harshly because I know I've been getting criticized for the longest from the way I express my words. Anyways, you have to excuse me, it's just, you know, so much stuff being uncovered in these end times. It's hard not to get upset looking back at things, you know. Hey, we're all here to change our ways, okay? If we could change our ways, great. If we can't, then I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, my mythology, if it's correct, has been less than stellar, but, you know, heaven's a witness I've changed, and uh, I'm still changing. So anyways, yeah, I don't think that the creator is evil. I think he is light, and in him there is no darkness, okay? That's what the scripture says. And sure, somewhere else it says, I form the light and create darkness. If there's a need to, if there's a necessity to create darkness to accomplish a greater good, some would say in case of an emergency, right? Fine. But I think that the God of this matrix, or I don't even know who's running it nowadays. Some say a couple of them. I think uh, uh, Samael, um, he likes to wield darkness and light. He thinks that gives him an advantage. If he's trying to deceive, I could see why. You know, you masquerade as an angel of light. If darkness doesn't get them, or, yeah, if darkness doesn't get them, you use light to deceive light, right? Or darkness to deceive darkness, or whatever. But if you know what to look for, or I should say, if you know that you need to be checking up on entities, test the spirits. If you know that, as scripture says, to test the spirits, don't just give them a free pass. Be on alert and know that, yeah, entities like to, some of them like to wield light and darkness. So you want to check on spirits to see if they are being genuine or where are they trying to lead you to. So if somebody has an agenda, they would wield light and darkness. So it all depends what light is to you and what darkness is to you. Okay. So anyways, yeah, there are two entities in the Old Testament. I believe the God of the Old Testament, Lord God, is Zeus. I could be wrong. And then the other one, one of the gods is the God of this matrix who helped create this earth. I think Samuel. And yeah, that's what you got going on, okay? Now, I'm not sure there's a possibility that uh, light could corrupt itself, you know, if you read the Gnostic text. You know, if you don't watch it, an individual that is considered to be light could be more darkness than light. So, yeah. Just something to consider when you read the scriptures. Because anybody that uses or relies more on darkness than light is not really operating in righteousness. In fact, anybody that is not striving to be pure light, as bright as they can be, is not really tapping into the true light, right? But rather still stuck in darkness or some darkness is still in them. Also, darkness could just mean ignorance, okay? 
So there's different ways of interpreting darkness. It could mean ignorance, meaning you lack insight to some of these things. So anyways, yeah, I believe a truly good being is mostly light and darkness. And a very high level being is light. And he might seem dark when he has to punish individuals, right? Whether he, he uses like some of these fallen ones here from the dark side or below in hell. Or if he has to get his hands dirty, he executes righteous judgment. It might seem like, you know, the true light is dark, but really it's, he's just doing his job. So that's what it is. Um, like I said, some entities, they can't, you know, prosper being pure light beings. Some of them can't prosper being pure darkness. So they wield both light and darkness, right? And that's what they think. They think that's the smart thing to do. But as long as their intentions are not pure, let's say they're trying to deceive me. So they need to tap into light. Okay. But their intentions are to trick me. That doesn't justify them. Okay. Even worse because they're using, especially if they use light to trick light, that doesn't justify them. It depends what they want to trick them for. If it's for a greater, to accomplish a greater good, okay, fine. But if it's not, if it's just to be messing around people and stuff like that, then that you can't justify that, you know. What good is using light or darkness if your intentions aren't pure? So, yeah, just wanted to let you know that. Stuff in the Old Testament, you got two gods, all right? Like I said, everything's coded in the scriptures. It's very hard to decipher if you don't continue in this truth for years. You know, you got to know the secrets. And the way to know the secrets is to pray about them. And or they, there's a bunch of extra biblical, canonical, pseudepigraphal, apocryphal, Gnostic texts out there that you can read, and they'll help you understand what I know. I mean, these are ancient secrets, okay? And basically, the 66 book canon is just a simplified version of all these things, all these books I just mentioned. But it's in your best interest to go outside the 66 book canon because there are entities that have an agenda that want to use the 66 book canon to sustain themselves and feed themselves and oppress others because their time is short. So they want to be worshipped and stuff like that. And they don't have a good agenda. You wonder why your life is the way it is. Well, you blame these entities, okay? So if you want to get up from under their rule, then you you. you, you got to know how to maneuver around the scriptures, what's what. You're going to have to learn the scriptures as best as you can and even go outside of them to the extra sources it, it connects to. All right? So basically what I'm saying is you got to know how to play this game, all right? You got to know how to checkmate them or keep them in a position where checkmate is inevitable. But if you if you have the right intentions, you'll prosper. You'll, you'll be victorious in understanding and reasoning. But if you have the wrong intentions, you're trying to play a game to win and just to act a fool and corrupt and stuff like that. Nah, it's not going to happen. So check your intentions. Um, yeah, understand that there are two forces in the Old Testament. Uh, the sent one, the Mashiach, came to break us free from the corrupt understandings of the gods of the Old Testament. Okay? Even the Lord God. You have to ask yourself, why would he punish man for eating the apple or knowing right from wrong? You're supposed to know the difference between right and wrong. He wanted to control Adam because that God is the devil himself, Zeus. As I made one or two videos about him, he's a true Lucifer. The I don't even know if he was a cherub. I think he was. He wants to dress up like God, but he's got other agents from Mount Olympus helping him. He's an old fart now. You know, I ran into him a few times. Um, he's just set up to play the wicked. Um, it's a disgrace to existence, along with the other idiots that follow him and worship him. He's got everybody worshiping him. Everybody prays to Jesus, which means go Zeus, right? G means command. You're commanding something. Zeus, get it? Zeus is a Greek deity. It also means horse, S-U-S. Which horse? White horse rider, right? It's all in the Bible. It all connects. He's got his little horse horsemen, horse riders, so, anyways, yeah, uh, stick to the New Testament, stick to the words of Mashiach, uh, Emmanuel, 
all right, in Jesus, whatever. But understand that there are two Jesus too, okay? Melanated Jesus, stronger than white man or white boy Jesus, okay? That's just the way things are. It has nothing to do with race or color, but it does play a factor, all right? So, I don't know how they look at things, but I look at it as a, as a dilemma of righteousness, right from wrong. I don't look at, you know, color, skin, and all that. I look at it as a thing of morals, righteousness, doing what's right, and stuff like that. Having wisdom to know what's right from wrong. And yeah, all those good stuff, qualities that an individual needs to have within them and in their mind. All right, so anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you understand. The Old Testament, you have two gods, and they're not the true God. Let me tell you that too, okay? The Old Testament gods, Lord God, God, not the true gods. Most High, that's the one, okay? So they're trying to trick you. The Most High, that's the one above Lord God and God that you read about in the Old Testament. And the sent one is Yesha number 12. The one from Luke chapter 3, not Matthew 1. Alright, so till next time, much love.